guys, welcome to ET Land. Thank you for being patient waiting for this video. I know it has been a long time since I received the device and replaced the SSD, but it has been very difficult for me to update my channel, so I'm sorry for that. And without further being said, let's get started. Okay, first of all, there's one thing that you have to bear in mind. You have to back up all the files on your device since obviously they were saved it on your desktop and somewhere or at somewhere else if you're not saving them to your SD cards. So you have to find something to back up your files. And there's one more thing that you have to back up that is uh, the Windows installed it on your device however um there is actually two way there are two ways to do so and the first way which is recommended by uh i know official website they have a tutorial on that that method did not work on my device so um if you go to create a recovery memory um on your usb Sometimes it may work for some people. I saw that on Reddit that there are some people using that method and they work. However, if that method doesn't work, you have to use another method, which is to use an other PC to copy their um, image for Windows so that you can borrow that image when you uh, after re replacing your SSD and then you can install that image onto your device since the Windows is actually implanted on the motherboard so once you are able to get online it will automatically update the Windows OS for you and then you'll be able to use the Windows again so now uh, I've shown you some footage on me trying to use the uh, the first method, which is to back up the Windows from INO Air. Um, since it doesn't work, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I just want to give you the idea that you can do uh, do it this way, but it just didn't work for me. Last reminder. If you replace the SSD, it will make the warranty invalid, so do it at your own risk and let's open the device. To begin with, you can use a guitar pick to open up the top bar of the device and just be careful, do not apply too much force or otherwise you may break it, it since it's very fragile. And after opening it, we'll be able to see all the screws inside and we can unscrew them. We also have to remove the L2 and R2 in order to open up the device. After removing the top bar and the triggers, we can start unscrewing it. And there's one more thing that you should bear in mind. The screws on beneath the top bar are a little bit shorter than that of the screws beneath the triggers. So it may take some time to remove the screws from uh, the, the place beneath the triggers. And uh, just remember to be patient. Also, I recommend you to put a towel underneath the device when you work on it because you don't want to damage the device or you don't want to scratch it. So just be careful and I would recommend you to use a towel. The next thing we are going to do with is the SD card slot. Make sure you have removed your SD card and uh, there is one screw inside the SD card slot, so also remove that. Remove the two screws next to the USB-C port at the bottom. Now we have done with all the screws at the exterior and we can start opening our device from the side with a guitar pick. The case is holding quite tight so make sure you try until you feel and hear the click from the clips inside and remember that there are some ribbons and cables inside so when you open it, be gentle. 
use the guitar pick to open up the device little by little along the cliff of the device. One more time, be gentle when you open it because there are cables and ribbons inside it. I'm not going to go into the details of the function of those parts that we are going to remove, but you can look at my step-by-step -step guide here so that we can make sure ourselves not getting wrong for the process. On the right hand side, there is a silvery label and that label is related to the warranty of your device. Since we are going to open it up, you will have to destroy that label and your warranty will be void. In order to make the process easier, we do not have to remove the ribbon and anything on the left. So we start from the middle of the device. Let's remove the screws that hold the fan. Remove the screws on the middle frame. There are a few screws that are very difficult to identify whether if they are on the middle frame or not. So bear with me uh, on the process so that you can make sure which screw is referred to which. There are a few screws right in the middle of the frame and there is one screw beneath the warranty label so you also have to remove those screws. And don't forget about the screws at the bottom. Since there was no tutorial on replacing the SSD of this device, I in, during the process I have I had to um, confirm bit by bit uh, to see if I have loosened the whole frame or not. Okay, four more screws to go and we can remove the mid frame. Once we have removed that frame, everything is a lot easier. If you want to play safe, you should remove the battery. However, it was too hot for me to remove it. I really cannot remove the battery. So I left it there and there was nothing happened. So I'm glad that it didn't burn my device. And you have to do this at your own risk. Next, remove the screw that tightens the SSD and then slide it out. Then slide in your SSD and screw it again. We'll be done with the hardware parts after putting all the things back to our device. Just like I've mentioned in the very beginning of this video, the backup memory USB thing didn't work for me. So I had to download the Windows OS on my Service Pro instead and then uh, use that data on my USB um, to install on my INL Air so that I can uh, reinstall my Windows and then um, to update the windows for my INL Air. Bear in mind that there is one more thing you need is internet and you have to have an adapter to connect to the LAN cable so that you can turn on the internet because your, uh, your Wi-Fi driver has not been installed on the new SSD and that will be a mess. Make sure the option for booting is the UEFI USB mass storage device 1.0 partition 1 so that you can use that to boot up your device. Move to the next tab, 
click save and exit and click yes then the default will boot up it will take some time to boot up and then you'll have to choose some of the options for example the language that you are using and so on next you have a pop-up window and then you have to click next and i accept and things like that and then eventually you choose the um, custom install windows only after that windows will be installed on your ironl air it does take some time so please be patient and prepare for your adapter that can use to connect the LAN cable to your um, INL Air. After the installation, the screen will be in portrait mode and we can change it back to landscape after getting in the windows. However, we have to connect to the internet first in order to set up the whole thing or otherwise we will stuck here forever so here is my buffalo land cable to usb connector and then i connect that usb to my usb a to usb c connector so in total there are two adapters on here but that actually helps me to get through the installation process so this is very important in order to change the screen from portrait mode to landscape mode, let's go to the settings and then go to display, then choose the screen orientation as landscape. The very next thing we have to do is to go to the INL official site to download all the drivers back. For the time being, um, the controller, the touchscreen, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of them are not functionable so they need drivers to enable them and then uh, as long as we do not have the internet this is very problematic so let's go to download all the drivers and i'll show you how to install them first of all go to device manager you can go there by searching on the taskbar click the icon next to the red cross and click Browse my computer for drivers. There is nothing happened because I've already updated my drivers. If you browse to the folder where you store all the drivers, it will automatically update the drivers for you. You may say that, oh, the Windows OS is not activated. This is for another device and I cannot use it. But don't worry about that as long as you connect to the internet and receive the update files for your Windows OS, you'll be able to activate it after the update. After activating your Windows and updating, uh, there's one more thing we have to do. It is to install the iOSpace. Iospace can be downloaded from the INO official site, so uh, you can go there to download it and then to install it, then everything will be done. One more thing as a bonus, I'm going to tell you how to split your drive. So now you have a 2TB drive and if you just want to, for example, have 500 gigabyte for your C drive and then uh, the rest is for your D drive, for example, then uh, we can go to Disk Manager and split it. After entering Disk Manager, right click the space at the bottom where you have your C drive and click Strength Volume. After several seconds, it will ask you um, how much do you want to strength your volume so you can decide uh, whatever you want and then you get some free space for uh, the other drive that is not used it here. The empty drive will be labeled as black so right click the empty label and then click add new label for the volume then you'll be able to uh, have a new drive for uh, that empty space. You can name the drive whatever you want. I'm naming it as Ironel Air. Um, and that's pretty much all for the whole process for 
swapping SSD and reinstalling a clean Windows for our INO Air. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you think this helpful, please subscribe to my channel. I'm almost there to 2,000 subscribers, so it is very important to have your support. Thank you very much for watching again, and see you later.